Thank you for watching this video on understanding Layer 2 networking. Today we will review the basics of Ethernet traffic and how it works, the mechanisms behind it and review CAM tables. So the CAM tables are the fundamental operation of what drives all of these network switches, and everything's based on MAC address-based communication. MAC addresses are basically like your home address. In this particular case, H1 computer has an address of AAA for a MAC address, 2 has an address of BBB, and H3 has a MAC address of CCC. These are obviously simplified for this particular example so that we can move through it quickly and make it a little bit easier to digest. But when computers first started doing networks, everything was based off of something called CSMACD, which is an abbreviation for carrier sensing multiple access with collision detection. And that's a fancy way of saying that when I send a packet out across the network, I'm gonna send it to all ports or flood it to the destination. I rely on the honor system to determine that you are the destination header and should receive the packet. In today's environment, this does not work from a perspective of volume of traffic, but there are serious cybersecurity initiatives that would be violated by sending your traffic flows out to all ports. So everything on Ethernet switching today is based on something called the flood and learn concept. So in this example, we're trying to send an Ethernet frame to a destination of MAC address BBB with a source address of ADA. So in other words, we're sending this from H1 to H2. When this goes out across the network, the CAM table that holds all the mappings for the MAC address ports initially comes back as being 100% empty. When the first packet gets sent out across the network, it executes the concept of flood and learn. Now we can see that for H1, my own MAC address our source is AA. Well, I don't know where the destination MAC is for BBB. So when that packet goes out across the network, we flood that packet out to all ports. During this process, I can determine my own MAC address and record that in the table. As each entity starts to send things across the network, you actually build this MAC address table. And once you learn all the MAC addresses for all the ports, the switch no longer operates in a flood environment. It's learned the pathway and will do a directed pathway of delivery. Today, all switches work on this concept of flood and learn. When we talk about segmenting the network down, you start talking about how large that domain is that you're actually gonna be doing that flood and learn process. So what can go wrong in this type of environment? Now there's something called BUM traffic. And while that seems like an absolutely ridiculous acronym to put out there, BUM traffic stands for broadcast, unknown, and multicast. Those are the three types of traffic that will go across your network that cannot be commonly mapped back to a CAM table. And their only representative action at that point is to flood those out to all ports. Now. Multicast, unfortunately, has gotten a bad rep in the industry as being problematic or difficult to deal with. A lot of people who've dealt with multicast transmissions before have seen instances where they get complete network failure. Multicast only works in properly designed and implemented networks. Multicast is the most efficient way to deliver high volume data across the spectrum. So in this example, to reach the three endpoints with unicast, I'm sending three different versions of that traffic where on the multicast, I'm sending one individual entity and through group subscriptions or IGNP subscription, it's being delivered to the actual monitors that are requesting it without increasing the bandwidth. Unfortunately, if you don't do unicast or multicast, you get into the third scenario, which is flooding data across your entire network. These three types of traffic are always problematic for certain high volume data transmission systems like video surveillance. And it's important to know when these particular events are happening. So we talk about network segmentation. There are some vendors that believe in the proxy approach. They'll take an archiver, they'll put one network card in it for the high volume data to come into and one network card for it to send out and put them on two separate networks. And then they rely on that particular archiver to manage that traffic. And more often than not, they'll put the entities on one side into one VLAN and all the entities on the other side into another VLAN. There are some potential problems with that approach. And the easiest way to look at this is if I talk about putting groups of people in a room. If I were to put 10 people in a room and break them down into groups of five, and each pair of two is carrying on a simultaneous conversation in a small room, that's probably pretty manageable. While you're going to hear other people's conversations, it's not going to cause performance issues. Put 400 people in a room and break them down into groups of two or 200 groups talking simultaneously, you will have absolute chaos. And the reason being is there is traffic in that particular segment that is being processed by everybody. And there's traffic in computer networks that have what's called a TTL of one or a time to live of one, meaning that that traffic goes everywhere within what's called that broadcast domain 
or that layer two network. And as you start to increase or put more data inputs into a layer two segment, the VMS is going to use universal plug and play and SSDP traffic and other things to go out and find all of your output devices automatically. Now it doesn't do that without a penalty. It's using this TTL1 traffic to broadcast out and find those. Anytime you see that type of traffic, it has to be processed by everybody that resides in that network segment. When it has to stop and process those, it drives the network subsystem higher and CPU higher. So with 150 output devices, it will cause the network to go down, meaning there was so much cross traffic going between the devices, every third ping or ICMP echo to a device was actually being dropped, which led to intermittent connections and all kinds of issues. So performance is one thing to think about when you look at segmentation, but the other thing is disaster control. Some sites have upwards of 3,000 output devices in one single VLAN. And the only thing I can equate this to is if you look at any large cargo ship or any passenger ship or anything of that nature, it has bulkheads throughout the ship. And the bulkheads are there for one sole purpose, if the hull gets breached, to stop that ship from going down to the bottom of the ocean. When you are running one large VLAN, one large network segment for your high volume traffic, if the hull gets breached, the whole thing's going to the bottom of the ocean. Remember there is no penalty for creating multiple VLANs. There is no penalty in performance for layer three routing. And as a matter of fact, you can actually make very simple VMs that are running over unicast and segment it down. Now your system will run more stable, perform faster and be more responsive. Contrary to what network vendors say, keep your network simple. When you start getting into layer three networks and routing, support becomes more difficult. But I can assure you that when you segment your network down properly, performance is at its highest level. Once you segment those down, each network or each VLAN is going to have its own network segment or tag that's associated with that. Now first, let's clarify what's an access port and what's a trunk port on a network. On this diagram, there is no layer three routing here. There are simply three VLANs, VLAN 10, 20, and 30. Each one of those are access ports that belong to that VLAN because the switch interconnect between the two switches carries multiple VLANs that has to be trunked or tagged. So all of the traffic that goes across those switches has to identify whether it belongs to VLAN 10, 20, or 30. So when it reaches the other side, it knows what recipient should actually receive that traffic. So when you look at configurations or you see things that can be either set for an access port or a trunk port, trunk ports are only meant for entities that are going to contain multiple VLANs. If you do not have multiple VLANs across the uplink, there is no reason to ever implement a trunk port. Thank you for watching this video to help you understand layer two networking. For more information and how to auto map your layer two network, download a free trial of UV Explorer at uvexplorer.com.